Hi guys, it's Summers here and it's time to take a look at the Red Bull RB16, a car that at first glance might look a heck of a lot like last year's car. However, there's certainly more than meets the eye with this 2020 Challenger, so let's take a look around the car and uncover those intricate details that you might have missed. First off, we have the nose, which it's clear to see has been changed. If it passed you by though, the team have completely refigured this in order that they can get the absolute maximum from the rest of the car. Taking a play out of Mercedes book, they have narrowed the nose quite considerably, which has allowed them to install a large undernose cape too. This cape is not only fed from the sides of the nose by the downwardly curved arches, but also by the team's overhaul of the nose tip region. The tip itself is still open-ended and more or less just there to appease the dimensional regulation requirements. However, it now features a flat peak that extends out over the top of the front wing's neutral section too. Beside this, the nose tip has been joined to the sides of the front wing pillars, enclosing the upper section and creating a sort of snowplay arrangement that will funnel airflow rearward. On top of the nose tip, there's a narrow ramp section which also has two inlets present within it, helping to fulfil the single section rules and further enhancing flow through the nose assembly. The narrowing of the nose has also meant that the team can take a little more artistic licence with the camera pods again, with more elegant stalks used to better position the camera pods for aerodynamic gain. Meanwhile, the Narca style ducts on the side of the nose that help to power their S duct have also been revised due to their proximity to the cape. Below the bulkhead, they're calling on an old trick too, using a Bellmouth style inlet to capture airflow that will likely be redistributed through the classic internal duct work. The vanity panel and S duct have also been smoothed out too, signalling the use of a revised inboard suspension setup, with the S duct having tails either side of the exit to better promote the flow pattern rearward. The horns added around the S duct at the Austrian Grand Prix last season are also retained in order to improve flow in that region of the car. Either side of the cockpit padding, a small fin can be found too. These first appeared way back when on a Marussia and will help airflow in that region to find its way over the back of the side pods and engine cover more effectively. A winged element can also be found under the airbox. This will help to tidy up airflow coming off the halo and the back of the driver's helmet. The side pods are a further refinement on the design introduced by the team in 2018, which now sees them use a narrower and shorter letterbox style inlet and a tighter undercut. An internal reshuffle of the power unit, their coolers and the ancillaries sees the jelly mould style side pods and engine cover being pulled in even tighter than ever before, whilst a higher but downwardly tilted cooling outlet will also improve flow into the coke bottle region. This will be further maximised by the new rear suspension layout, which sees the lower wishbone raised quite significantly. Meanwhile, a serious effort has been made with the thin region around the rear brake duct too. The rear wing now features a two-pillar arrangement rather than the mono-pillar its predecessor had, but the team seems intent on keeping the Mickey Mouse style exhaust configuration with two wastegate pipes pointing up toward the rear wing. All in all, it's a very impressive job by Red Bull, refining almost every aspect of the car, a car that was actually already starting to show the potential of both the Red Bull chassis married to the Honda power unit during the course of last season. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more technical Formula 1 content.